Kenneth Lewis, we have heard uh, Hamid Nouri's uh, second uh, session of uh, defense and testimony. Could we call it uh, a testimony? I, I would like to call it a fairy tale. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, he's having a good time. He, he uh, I mean, it's actually, in fact, considering the seriousness of this case, uh, it's r really rather disrespectful what he's doing there. But he's claiming all kinds of, of nonsense about how well treated everyone was and how he was uh, so concerned about the welfare of the prisoners. I mean, it's just nonsense. We, we have so many testimonies and it's so well known in the whole world what happened in Iranian prisons then and now. There's no difference. They torture people and so on. No, he's never seen anything. But he claimed that this is a narration of uh, those who are against the Islamic Republic. Of, of course, of course. Uh, everything was a conspiracy and it's all been orchestrated by the People's Mujahideen of Iran. Uh, but there are, of course, there are many questions to ask him. If Montesiri was cooperating with the, the, the Mujahideen, for instance, why wasn't he executed? because in the fatwa that was made by Khomeini, he said even people who are just uh, cooperating in some way with this organization, they have become Moharem. They should be executed, they're waging war against God. So in reality, his fairy tale is not even consistent. It, it doesn't make sense. He's also wrong on a lot of concrete points. You know, he's, he's just repeating the slanders that the regime has has been spreading for years and years. Mm. But uh, <laughs> the thing is that uh, he insisted on using the term of monotheism instead of mujahideen, and then uh, even the judge let him to continue with it. Yes, well, you know, that, that's also an interesting point because he claims that even saying the word, the name, uh, people's mujahideen in Iran would lead to prison. So, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. Of course, it's, uh, the whole thing is nonsense, but uh, he, he has said Mujahideen quite a few times, actually. So, he, according to what he himself has said, he should already be in trouble if he goes back to Iran. Yeah, but even he asked the persecutors not to use the yeah, name that, of that, the... That, that's what I mean, though. He's playing a game. He's, he's, um, he, he really, I, think, I think he understands at this point that the evidence against him is overwhelming. So he's just having a good time and he's trying to rack up points in relation to the Iranian regime. I think he's uh, figuring that if he's a loyal defender of the Iranian regime and re repeats all of the nonsense that, uh, that he's been doing, that the Iranian regime will take care of his family. That's what I really think. Uh, I think he's planning to go to prison. He understands that uh, this evidence is, is just too overwhelming. He's not going to be able to get out of it. And then uh, it seems that from the time that he started his uh, testimony, the, the, the court be became more political. His whole defense is political. There's no other description for it. I mean, uh, he, he has repeated all of the historical slanders of the Iranian regime against the People's Mujahideen, the main resistance uh, movement, and as well against the communists and, and Marxists and so on. So, I mean, that's extremely political. Everything he's been saying is precisely a political defense of a rotten regime. Uh, I mean, he knows what the world thinks about uh, Iran, the Iranian legal system, and so on. I mean, we have Amnesty International, we have everyone who have commented, even the United Nations, the, the reporter on human rights is continually making comments about human rights violations, executions, and all the rest of it in Iran. But for him, that doesn't exist. If you, if you listen to him, then uh, Iran must be paradise on earth. Yeah. And what do you think about the end of this uh, story? Well, we're going on, we have more and more evidence you know, he's trying to, the only, the only points that, that his lawyers have been able to, to uh, score so far is that one witness testimony is not exactly consistent with another witness's testimony. 
but you see that is in the nature of things when you have if i use i used to have the the, the joke that if you have uh, one defendant and four witnesses you have at least six different versions of what happened so this is natural if people are telling the truth then obviously their memories 33 years after the fact are going to differ and even their memories in relation to what they might have said to the police in an interrogation one and a half year ago or something like that or they suddenly have remembered new things i mean this is we who work all the time in the legal system we know that this is natural this is evidence of the fact that these people as to the best of their ability are telling the truth thank you so much can i please thank you